Mr. Cook, you talked some about the uh, potential for additional commercial involvement in human exploration beyond low Earth orbit. Uh, could you elaborate on what you see as the potential opportunities both in the near term and in the longer term? Uh, Senator, that's, uh, thank you very much for the question. That's that's a good question. And again, from from the standpoint, I think you look at it in two categories. Uh, one is in new wealth creation. Uh, this is probably more of the longer term. Uh, you have efforts out there today uh, that are looking at uh, mining asteroids. Uh, Planetary Resources, for example, has plans to do that. Also, there's a, there's a venture out there called B612 that is looking at uh, asteroid detection, things of that nature. Uh, recently, uh, NASA signed a space act agreement with, uh, with Bigelow Aerospace to look at the broader set of implications for what does the commercial marketplace look at beyond low Earth orbit. And I think that's in a two-phased gated approach. The results of that, I think, are going to be very interesting in terms of what comes. But I think uh, for new wealth creation in particular, whether it be uh, new, new space stations in low Earth orbit, which is probably nearer term, and there are plans uh, that, that are in place for that now. Uh, as well as longer term, uh, again, an outpost uh, on the lunar surface, for example, could be used for mining purposes. Uh, you're going to have to have logistic servicing of that outpost. And so those, those go hand in hand. The key to that, again, is having a, a consistent long-term plan in terms of how you want to put a lot together. One thing you have referred to several times is, is potential opportunities for mining. Uh, I think it would be helpful if you could share uh, our best knowledge and predictions as to what the mining opportunities might be, either on asteroids or, or on the moon itself. Yeah, there is a, and I would certainly be willing to take some more, Senator, some more uh, time and, and respond to that more fully. And for the record, uh, there are quite a few studies out there, but in particular, uh, two, two minerals that have been talked about the most. Uh, helium-3 uh, uh, that is uh, in abundance uh, on the moon uh, that has uh, potential application to fusion power here back on Earth, very clean uh, power. The key there is there has to be a low-cost infrastructure. You've got to have the interstate highway system, if you will, between here and the moon to be able to get it back and forth. That's where things like SLS comes into play, where you where that, that's the government private sector involvement to be able to bring those uh, get the resources there to mine it and then bring them home, uh, for example. And there's been a lot of work uh, done on that uh, by the University of uh, Wisconsin, as a matter of fact. And then uh, platinum has come up as a, uh, which is obviously a very uh, valuable mineral uh, that could be uh, used back here on Earth. Those are just two examples. 